happy and blessed Tuesday, Ark of Safety Christian Church family, friends, and visitors. Would you agree that this is a day, the day, that and now night that our God has made, we're rejoicing and we're glad in it that God was with us all day long, no matter what negative thing may have happened. As my friend Elder Troy Berry says, it doesn't negate that today was still a good day. Maybe just a bad moment, but it's still a good day because we serve a good God and we are his people and the sheep of his pasture. So we should enter into his gates with thanksgiving, into his courts with praise. Let's be thankful unto him and bless his name for the Lord is good and he is worthy to be praised. I am Elder Clintonio Chapman, and I welcome you to this Bible study in which we also deem as a worship experience. Why do we say that? Because God is worth our time and is worth experiencing his word. Family, tonight we have one of our beloved elders that would teach in our bishop's stead, Elder Gail Thomas. She's a powerful woman of God. She is the, uh, the leader of our uh, outreach ministry as well as our grief and recovery ministry. She's married to the wonderful Elder James Thomas, a praying man of God. Elder Gail loves her church. She loves her family, and she shows it because she has been in with the Ark of Safety Christian Church for over two decades. And guess what, family? She adds value to our church by lending her gifts to her local church and to the body of Christ. So after I pray, Elder Gail Thomas will break open the bread of life so that we, our souls may be nourished and so that we may be fed through the word of God. Bow your heads with me now. Father, we thank you and we love you and we praise you and we magnify you, God. We ask God that you will just forgive us of all of our sins and wash our hearts and cleanse our minds. And even God, help us to bring our minds in from the wanderings of the world. Father, now we focus on you through your spirit that will utilize our mind and then take it into our spirit, O oh God, the word of God that Elder Gail would teach on tonight. Father, I pray for Elder Gail that you would touch her, God, so that teaching and explanations will be made easy through the power of the Holy Spirit. Smear her with your anointing, O oh God, so that she speaks your word, that your word will go forth and bring spirit and life to the hearer, the listener, and the door is in the matchless name of Jesus. Yes, Yeshua, who's a Christ that we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Come on, sister. Thank you, Elder Tony. Good evening, our family and friends. Thank you for joining us tonight at Bible study at the Ark of Safety Christian Church. I am Elder Gail Thomas. And I am grateful to be in your presence once again to bring you a Bible study. I want to first acknowledge my pastor, Bishop C. Anthony Muse, and our First Lady, Elder Pat Lawson Muse, for entrusting me with tonight's lesson. I also want to acknowledge our Assistant Pastor, Elder Tony Chapman, who you just heard, our Administrative Staff, Sister Brandi Calhoun, and all those who work with her, um, music and media ministry, and all those who take part in ensuring that we are able to broadcast weekly every Tuesday night. So thank you once more and again. And also I would like to thank my family and friends who have supported me and have been praying for me as I have prepared for this message. You know what you've done and I just want to give a shout out and a thanks to all of you. I also want to acknowledge elder elect Tony Donaldson. Tony, I was out of town when you gave your message, give me my mountain. But after listening to the message, I thank the Holy Spirit for confirming the message that I am going to give tonight. So thank you. Let us go to the Lord and pray. Father God, thank you for allowing us to see this day and once again come into your presence this night in worship. We thank you for the continuous healing of our pastor, Bishop Hughes. I pray that you will continue to bless 
him and Lady Muse for their untiring labor for the kingdom. I pray for the membership that we will continue to grow in your word. I pray for those that are sick among us that and those who are grieving. We ask, Father God, that you would comfort them. And as your words lets us know, you said you would never leave us or forsake us. Lord, we are in awe of the great things that you are about to do for this branch of Zion. And we thank you in advance. It is in the name of Jesus the King, I pray. Amen. My subject for tonight, past, present, or future. What legacy will you leave? Ecclesiastes third chapter, verse 15 reads, that which has been is now, and that which is has already been, and God required that which is past. What was it and may become are all three components to what we know as life's journey. They are part of it because it helps us and shapes us in the plan that God has already destined for our lives. Our life stories are not all pleasant, but they are all beneficial to a generation yet to come. In the book of Joshua chapter four, we find the story of the Israelites coming to the end of their 40 year journey through the wilderness, the land to the land that God had promised them. They were leaving the hardship and the bondage of 400 years in Egypt. Joshua now is their leader. And as he speaks to the people before they are about to cross into the land of promise. So Joshua summoned 12 men and he appointed each one from each of the tribes of Israel. And he said, cross over before the Ark of the Covenant and go into the middle of the Jordan. Each of you is to take a stone upon your shoulder, according to the number of tribes, to serve as a sign among you. In the future, when your children ask, what do those stones mean to you? You are to tell them the waters of the Jordan were cut off before the Ark of the Covenant. The Lord says, and when you cross the Jordan, the waters were cut off. Therefore, these stones are to be a memorial to the Israelites forever. There must always be a reminder of what was so that the story that we leave can live on forever. If we don't tell our stories, it will be lost forever in the chronicles of time. Ecclesiastes 1, verse 11, the amplified rendering reads, there is no remembrance of earlier things, nor also of the things that are to come. There will be for them no remembrance by generations who will come after them. My subject tonight, past, present, future, what legacy will you leave, is a question first to the church, spiritually and physically, then to fathers, mothers, grandparents, men and women. This question is not based on ethnicity, gender, religious affiliation, or prestige. What then is legacy? The word legacy is defined as a long lasting impact of particular events, action, etc that took place in the past or of a person's life, something transmitted by or received from an ancestor or a predecessor or from the past. The Bible speaks of a legacy that we are to leave our children. Psalms 38 and four. We will not hide them from their children, but tell them to the coming generation, the glorious deeds of the Lord and his might and the wonders he has done. Proverbs 22 and six reminds us, train up a child in the way he should go. When he is old, he will not depart from it. Deuteronomy six, verses six through nine. And these words 
that I command you today shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk in the way and when you lie down and when you rise. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorpost of your house and on your gates. Legacy should not be confused with inheritance, which refers to the assets that one, an individual, bequeaths to their loved ones after they pass away. An inheritance may contain cash, investments such as stocks and bonds, assets, jewelry, automobiles, antiques, real estate. These things are tangible and may only last for a season depending on the stewardship, stewardship of the inheritor. An example, and a good example, as you can remember, is the prodigal son. The Bible warns us in Matthew 6, verses 19, Matthew chapter 6, verses 19 through 21, the new revised standard version about earthly treasures. And it reads thusly, do not store up for yourself treasures on earth where moth and rust consume, where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourself treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust consumes and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart is also. The choice is ours. Making a treasure out of earthly distractions may seem appealing, but it won't last. A treasure that is spiritual in nature and centered in love will result in endless joys and blessings. An inheritance that we leave to our children must be more than just things, land, money, home, cars, and the likes. It should be the inheritance of our life achievements and accomplishments by God's great and his mercy. Tell the children that, that we seek an eternal inheritance that God promised in Psalms 48, verse 11. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk upright. An inheritance is what is left to you. A legacy is what is left in you. Hebrews chapter 11 lists the heroes of the faith. Even though they did not see the promised Messiah, they kept their faith and hope that they would. Hebrews 11 verses 39 through 40. And all these things, having obtained a good testimony through faith, did not receive the promise. God having provided something better for us, that they should be made perfect apart from us. We must deposit the legacy of love of God and his word in our children. I read that verse to you earlier in Proverbs 22 and 6. Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he's old, teaching him to seek God's wisdom and will for his abilities and talent. Even when he's old, he will not depart from it. The world may cause them to stray just as we did, but we must remain obedient, praying for the protection of our children, the seed of the future of this country and of the world. We must leave them then a legacy of faith, belief and trust in God, the creator of all and all things. We must leave them a legacy to pray about everything, to seek the kingdom of God first and his righteousness and all other things will be added. We must leave them a legacy that we honor God with our time, our talent and our resources. We must leave them a legacy of service to God and mankind. We must leave them the legacy about changing the world by doing the will of God through the leading of his Holy Spirit. We must leave them the legacy of the gift 
of the knowledge of the Lord of the Lord and his saving power. We must warn them about the pitfall, pitfalls of not following God. We must leave them the legacy of wealth building through the word of God, not by the world's standards, but by the word of God. Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 8, verses 18. You shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth, that he may confirm his covenant that he swore to your fathers as it is this day. Luke 6, verse 38. Give, and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. The church today must also leave a legacy. We must leave a church of faith and not doubt. The past four years, beginning with the outbreak of COVID-19, has changed the way traditional church services were conducted. New technology has brought such techniques such as live streaming and Zoom as the alternative to brick and mortar attendance. We can no longer afford to be a hearer of the word and not doers of the word. John 9 and 4 tells us, as long as it is day, we must do the work of him who sent us. Night is coming when no one can work. The day of opportunity passes, never to return. So we must work the work of him who has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. John 8 and 12. Again, Jesus spoke to them saying, I am the light of the world. Whosoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of the world. The church can no longer afford to be complacent to our call to rescue the perishing. Under the guidance of the Holy Spirit, we must not leave our children a world church, but a word church that will lead others to the power and saving grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, February is recognized as Black History Month when we celebrate the achievements of black men and women to our country and the world. The legacy of those who have gone on before us have inspired many of you to press on and become the best you. Many of you were able to overcome many adversities and injustices by reading the inspiring stories of how these heroes before us persevered and achieved with their God-given talent in spite of the odds against them. There are countless names that will never be found in the National Black History Museum in Washington, D.C. History books, brochures, pamphlets, or calendars. But these are the lives of our heroes and our sheroes, our grandfathers and our grandmothers our great-grandmothers and great-grandfathers, our fathers and our mothers, uncles, aunts, neighbors, and friends who toiled, labored, marched, and stood tall to secure the freedoms that we have been afforded to by the constitution of this country, but still yet denied. We must leave a legacy of those who have gone on before us. You see, if we don't tell our story, the world now wants to erase that knowledge of what we have given, what we have toiled and labored and have made this country great. Our history wants to be erased, but we must leave a legacy to ensure that it never is. There are many heroes of the past 
too many to mention. So I am just going to mention a few. I pray that you will take some time later this month, next month, and throughout the year to tell your story of your heroes and sheroes that love a legacy in your life that you will never forget. I know I have a shero that I'll never forget. My mom told me the story of growing up in the small town which she lived in, she grew up in. Her school only went to the seventh grade. So that's as far as she could go. But she had a desire and she persevered and sought to become a high school graduate. At the age of 75 years old, with the help of my sister, taking her to night classes and studying with her, she received her GED. We must leave a legacy for our children. In the field of religion, Rich Allen, a minister, educator, and writer who was born into slavery, he later converted to Methodism and bought his freedom. Fed up with the treatment of African-American parishioners in the Episcopal Church congregation, he eventually founded the first national black church in the United States, the African Methodist Episcopal Church. In the field of law, Charles Hamilton Houston, an American lawyer. He was the dean at Howard University Law School and the NAAC first special counsel. He was a graduate of Amherst University and Howard Law School. Houston played a significant role in dismantling Jim Crow laws of the South especially attacking segregation in schools and racial housing. Houston is also known for having trained and mentored a generation of black attorneys, including Thurgood Marshall, future founder and director of the NAAC Legal Defense Fund and the first black Supreme Court justice. In civil rights, of course, we cannot forget Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. He was an American Christian minister, an activist, and political philosopher who was one of, the, one of the most prominent leaders in the civil rights movements from 1955 until his assassination in 1968. A black church leader and son of an early civil rights activist and minister, Dr. Martin Luther King Sr. Dr. King was a civil rights activist for people of color in the United States and throughout the world by use of nonviolence resistance and nonviolent civil disobedience. Dr. King was one of the leaders of the 1963 March on Washington, where he delivered his I Have a Dream speech on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial in 1963. In the field of education, Carter G. Whitson, founded the Association for the Study of Negro Life and History in 1915. Woodson maintained motivation was to recognize the contribution of African Americans to society, something that traditional historians and writers had ignored or suppressed for years because of racial bias. In 1926, he started the National Negro History Week which later became in 1976, Black History Month. In the field of medicine, Charles Richard Drew. He was an American surgeon and medical researcher. He researched in the field of blood transfusion, developing improved techniques for blood storage. He applied his expert knowledge to developing large scale blood, blanks, blood banks early in World War II. This allowed medics to save thousands of lives. Dr. Drew protested against the practice of racial segregation and the donation of blood as it lacked no scientific foundation and he resigned his position 
with the American Red Cross, which maintained that policy until 1950. For science, Priola, Catherine, Johnson, an American mathematician whose calculations of orbital mechanics as a NASA employee was critical to the success of the first and sub subsequent U.S. crew space flights. During her 33-year career at NASA, she earned a reputation for mastering complex manual calculations and helped pioneer the use of computers to form the task. The Space Agency noted her historical role as one of the first African-American women to work at NASA. She was portrayed by Taraji B. Henson in the 2016 movie, Hidden Figures. In the field of defense, the Tuskegee Airmen were the first black military aviators in, in the United States Air Corps, a predecessor to the U.S. Air Force. Trained at the Tuskegee Army Airfield in Alabama, they flew more than 15,000 individual flights in Europe and North Africa. Their impressive performance earned them more than 150 distinguished flying courses. Benjamin O. Davis Jr. was a graduate of West Point and the son of Benjamin O. Davis Sr., one of two black officers in the entire U.S. military and one of the members of the Tuskegee Airmen. We must put into remembrance the legacy we want for our children, our grandchildren, and those yet to come. We must pray and teach them how to pray daily for their protection, mind, body, and spirit. We must tell our story so that the past, present, and future can live on. Sharon James in her book, When You Don't Like Your Story, said, I think we all can look at our lives and want to tear out a few pages, but it's difficult to understand a story if a few chapters are missing. We then must embrace the stories that we are given and trust God to keep writing the stories into our lives. Finally, I want to end with excerpts from The Hill We Climb, a spoken word poem written by American poet Amanda Gorham as recited by her at the inauguration of President Joseph Biden on, in Washington, D.C., on January 20th, 2021. If we merge mercy with might and might with right, then love becomes our legacy and change our children's birthright. So let us leave behind our country better than the ones we were left. Every breath from my bronze pounded chest, we will raise this wounded world into a wondrous one. We will rise from the golden hills of the West. We will rise from the windswept Northeast where our forefathers first realized revolution. We will rise from the late grim cities of the Midwestern states. We will rise from the sun-baked South. We will rebuild, reconcile, and recover. And every known nook of our nation and every corner called our country our people, diverse and beautiful, will emerge battered and beautiful. When day comes, we step out of the shade, aflame and unafraid. The dew dawn blooms as we free it, for there's always light, light, if only we are brave enough to see it, if only we are brave enough to be it. Well, that ends my message for tonight. I pray that my message, past, present, future, what legacy will you leave has encouraged you. Truth be told, we have all had them, whether we want to acknowledge them or not. But maybe tonight you're a person 
who's dealing with hurt past, failures, and your today doesn't seem like it's getting better and you're fearful of your tomorrow. I have some good news for you. God knows all about them and he doesn't count them against us. He wants us to be free. So tonight, I want to offer salvation, deliverance from your sin and the consequences of sin and a new life in Christ. If this is you tonight, I want you to repeat after me this prayer. Dear Lord, I ask you to come into my life. Forgive me for living my life outside of your will. Today, I want to receive you as my Lord and my Savior. I believe that you died on the cross for me. Help me to live the rest of my life in your glory. Come into my heart and save me. If you pray this prayer tonight, you are saved from the penalty of sin. Amen. And tonight, perhaps you're going through some challenges that have knocked you off of your foundation. Life, it happens to all of us. But our Heavenly Father cares and he loves us all. Don't walk away. Don't leave God. Call out to him. He will answer you. So if tonight you're that person who has left, now you just in a mess. You don't understand. You don't know what you're going to do. God wants you to come back. So I want you to rededicate tonight to him. Repeat this prayer after me. Dear Father, I want to return to you to renew my faith and, my, and recommit my life. Forgive my doubts and detours from your path. Strengthen my heart to follow you and trust you in love. Guide me in all truth and keep me ever close to you. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Well, perhaps tonight you may not belong to a church at all. So, at all. If that's you, we here at the Ark would love for you to be a part of the Ark under the leadership of our senior pastor, Bishop C. Anthony Hughes. We are a Bible-believing, Bible-teaching, Christ-centered, and loving church, and I know you will feel welcome here. So if you prayed the prayer of salvation, or you rededicated your life to Jesus, or you joined the church tonight, Bishop Muse would like to know. You can email him at bishopmuse at gmail.com or text him at 240-266-5005. He would love to hear from you and to pray with you. In closing, thank you for partnering with the Ark of Safety through your giving. Your gifts help us to bless many as we do the work of ministry to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ and to build up the kingdom of God. On behalf of Bishop and Lady Muse and our leadership, thanks to everyone who has given to what our church building in Akaki, Maryland. If you have not given you and are able to do so, please do so at the end of the second by the end of the second escrow payment, which is due this coming Saturday. For your convenience, there are three ways to give electronically. They are Cash App, Dollar Sign, Arc of Safety 1999, PayPal, Arc of Safety 1999, and Givelify. Just search for the Arc of Safety Christian Church in Upper Marlboro, Maryland. Thank you again tonight for joining us. I have a few announcements to read in your hearing. The season of Lent has begun. And if you have not received a copy of this year's Lenten devotional, please email us at bishopmuse at gmail.com so that we can send it to you. Let's go through the daily scriptures, prayers, readings, and reflections together. It promotes unity and makes our church family stronger. And even if you're not an ARC member, 
we invite you to read and pray along with us during the season of Lent. Lastly, please mark your calendars and join us on Sunday, March 31st for an in-person and virtual Resurrection Sunday service. We will serve coffee and juice from 9 a.m. to 9.30 a.m. and service will start promptly at 9.45 a.m. The address for this event is 1633 Tucker Road, Fort Washington, Maryland, and the zip code is 20744. Again, I thank you for joining us at the ARC tonight. We really, I have enjoyed worshiping with those of you at the ARC and those of you who are listening that I have invited. I hope you're out there. So again, thank you again. So tonight, our benediction. Now, may God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you completely, and may your entire spirit, soul, body, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you, and good night.